You gave your vote, you have decided about your favorite song from ABBA Voyage. Let's talk about your favorite songs apart from I Still Have Faith in You and Don't Shut Me Down. In fact, let's do a ranking based on your votes. And with that, I'm introducing a brand new rubric to this channel and it's called Sit and Chat. Hey, hey, so welcome to this new rubric sit and chat and what this is is it means I sit and I chat and you chat because you give me your input your comments and I've been going through all the comments from the last video where we were celebrating Abba's voyage album the third anniversary and I ask you to give me your favorite song from the album apart from I still have faith in you and don't shut me down because those two were the first two singles they are generally celebrated as the most beloved songs from the album generally speaking uh, and so I wanted to know which is your favorite song apart from those two and we will talk about that ranking and your favorite song from Voyage in a moment but first let's remember the 10th of November because today 45 years ago ABBA performed the final concert live at Wembley Arena and this year is actually the 10th anniversary of this archival release the complete concert from that final show at Wembley Arena happy anniversary to ABBA live at Wembley Arena and who could have known that a few years later, actually three years after that album was released, in 2017, the four members of ABBA came together in the recording studio to record their first new material in 35 years by that time. And those two songs were, of course, I Still Have Faith in You and Don't Shut Me Down. And those two first recordings were also the first ones to be released for us as the first new material of ABBA. The first two singles from their full new album Voyage. Uh, so it's only natural of course that those two songs are linked with so much emotion, uh, integrity and quality for all of us. Um, and so I decided give me your favorite song apart from those two one song only and I went uh, through all those uh, 140 comments um, about half of them gave me a vote and I picked all of them I put them together and we have a winner we actually have one winner um, and of course we can also do a ranking based on those votes um, I have to say one thing about those votes <laughs> because some of you decided to cheat a little uh, and what you did was you gave me two songs to select it's two favorite songs apart from still have faith and don't shut me down so I was sitting here and thinking what should I do now so what I did was I took all your votes into consideration but we basically have two versions of a result so let's go on with the ranking and uh, your number one favorite song from our voyage your favorite apart from I still have faith in you and don't shut me down your favorite song is Ode to Freedom the final closing song from the album The second place is the song I Can Be That Woman. But if we take into consideration the comments that gave me two song choices, if we add those to the ranking, we have a different winner depending on which, um, which ranking we choose. Uh, the third place was a, quite a surprise to me, but you're number three, no doubt about it. Uh, and it's actually the third and fourth place have the same number. Um, 
when it comes to the one vote ranking only. Third place is either keep an eye on Dan or no doubt about it. If we consider the ranking where you gave me two song choices, number one is I Can Be That Woman, number two is Ode to Freedom, number three, no doubt about it, and number four would be keep an eye on Dan. There's only one vote difference in that case. So, uh, what I will do today is also I'm going to read some of your comments uh, regarding some of the songs and regarding praise for the Voyage album. Uh, and the next song, the next uh, number, number five in our ranking, would be the song Bumblebee. Number six in the ranking would be When You Danced With Me. And again, if I take into consideration the two votes as well, those two places would change and the difference is only uh, one, one vote in that case. And uh, When You Dance With Me would be number five, Bumblebee would be number six. Uh, and I am going to read some of your beautiful comments about that song. Aside from I still have faith in you and don't shut me down, I loved every single track, but the one song that really tucked at my heartstrings more than any other was, for some odd reason, Bumblebee. I think I got too overwhelmed by the simplicity but deep weight of the lyrics and the sweet dance between Benny's melancholic icy synth and Frida's honey-like vocals, which almost crack by the time she sings that last feeling sad for those who never. By the end of the track, I was a sea of tears and I always get a bit misty-eyed when I listen to the song. There's no hard or horrible thought behind it. It's just so beautiful and earnest that it makes me want to cry. A most beautiful commentary on Bumblebee, which seems to be a hidden favorite and is one of my top favorites from the album. And there was one comment about Bumblebee that got me thinking because I never really considered the lyrics to be seen like that. And I have to admit it, um, there's something to that. And I really enjoy with all the heartbreak that um, this alludes to this notion and idea about Bumblebee and especially about the lyrics and Frida's delivery. And this is, Bumblebee breaks my heart as I believe it is elegiac. It's about an older woman facing her mortality. But for now, I'm in my garden. And there is something to that comment that got me thinking. And I have to say, looking at the lyrics, it is obviously about those bumblebees and about the change in nature that we are facing. But um, there's something in between those lines when she sings and he writes, Björn, as a lyricist, that rather clumsy, erratic flight of that bumblebee, that vulnerability um, of the bumblebee, a vulnerability that is also faced by older people. So there, there's some deeply sad but beautiful message in there and in the performance as well. It all adds up to, to that magical song, uh, in my opinion, that is Bumblebee. So thank you very much for those very um, inspiring uh, comments of yours. And I had so much fun going through all the comments uh, uh, these days uh, and putting this ranking together because you, uh, they are, they all always, they very often inspire me to, to think further and sometimes give me ideas for topics even for my videos. And so I'm really glad to sit down here with you in this new rubric on the channel, sit and chat and go back and forth with your comments, with your inputs, with my ideas. 
and uh, and build on that. It's it's so much fun. And we mentioned the song "I Can Be That Woman," so I want to give, I want to read this comment about it. It's it's quick and simple, and it says, "I can be that woman, a mini film right in front of my eyes. I am seeing it when I am listening to the song." And that's exactly my thoughts from the very beginning when I was listening to the song to the album for the first time, and that song came on. Suddenly, I was transported. I, I was there in those moments, in those lyrics, and the vocal delivery of Agneta is absolutely sublime. We talked about it on this channel in the Voyage series, going through all ten songs from the album, uh, and. You folks uh, also said back then to me very often that you consider this to be one of the best uh, performances by Agneta ever. And this comment actually got me thinking, a mini film right in front of your eyes. Even back then, I was thinking about the possibilities of music videos for the Voyage album. And I had this song in my mind at some point, but then I'm I was thinking, and I'm still thinking. It's perhaps even better to leave it to your imagination to not have a music video for that song, because it is so visual that you just have to listen to it and make it up in your own mind. That's what I think, anyway. But it got me thinking further about the visual presentation of the Voyage album, about the possibility of music videos. Is I have always imagined an animated music video for the song Bumblebee. Even in the, actually in the beginning, I was thinking about an actual music video with Frida sitting in that garden, etc. But to make it more stylistic and We know that the ABBA members did not participate really in themselves in person for the music videos for Voyage. So to avoid that, um, why not do uh, or why not have done a music video for a, an animated music video for Bumblebee, uh, where you see the clouds sailing with the breeze and the the Bumblebee. Hum, flying and humming along, and you see an animated old Frida uh, or old woman uh, sitting in her garden. That's something that I imagine would be very nice to have. Uh, but that's only a little interlude of thoughts, a little some what ifs and some own ideas. What could have been done. Let's return to our rankings. We have Ode to Freedom, I Can Be That Woman, No Doubt About It, Keep An Eye On Dan, Bumblebee, When You Dance With Me, and basically the final two songs, those who received the uh, least votes, were Just An Ocean and Little Things. So going back to your comments, let, me, let us go back to, to your favorite choice, to number one, Ode to Freedom. You wrote... My third favorite song from Our Voyage, apart from I Still Have Faith in You and Don't Shut Me Down, is Ode to Freedom. It gives me peace. Another one says, definitely Ode to Freedom. That's their goodbye. I love everything about it, including how it starts and ends. Another comment said, my current favorite track from the Voyage album is surprisingly Ode to Freedom. I find its melody from haunting to relaxing. And the final one says, Ode to Freedom is very special considering the historical moment we are living nowadays. It shows the wish for real freedom and peace they have for our world. Those are your voices, some of your voices for your favorite selection, Ode to Freedom. And here is here are two final song comments about uh, two songs. No doubt about it, the song that surprised me a little bit to be that high in your ranking 
says uplifting nice harmonies and great powerful solo vocals by Frida. I recognize a bit of the old ABBA in it. The song is positive, fun, and they are sounding young. And here's a similar comment uh, about going back in time with some of the songs from Voyage. I think When You Dance With Me is the closest to 70s hour with those gorgeous chorus harmonies and no doubt about it is the closest to their 80s output. Again, I want to thank all of you for giving me your comments and it was so much fun and uh, such an enjoyment for me to go through and pick some of those. And again, if I didn't pick yours and it wasn't read here, it is never personal. I just have to pick some comments out of 140 in that case. And those are the comments that I picked. And maybe next time it's yours. But I also want to read <laughs> the two comments, two funny comments which I'm not quite sure actually if they were intended to be funny because every now and then a comment pops up very it's those comments are the uh, minority but I'm going through, you have to imagine I'm going through all those comments uh, and 98% are positive praising the topic we are talking about praising the channel uh, the presentation uh, and every now and then there is there are a few comments that that really crack me up actually that i'm 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 genuinely i have to laugh <laughs> and this is one of them so i'm going through all those comments and and funnily enough those com I, i've never seen any other comments from those people but then they pop up and here's a comment and one of them wrote <clears throat> I am not impressed. So I had no idea what that individual was talking about. And someone replied, with what? And of course, we have never heard back. We don't know what that individual is not impressed with. Um, is, it the, is it the Voyage album? Is it the third anniversary? Is it uh, the video itself, my video? Whatever it is, this comment really made me laugh uh, because, as I said, you go through all those very kind and nice and favorable comments and all of a sudden it just says, I am not impressed. So thank you very much for that. And another wrong one <laughs> is this one. You're wrong. Some of us have been fans since the 70s. Say you're sorry. Um, so I have no idea what this is alluding to, in fact, uh, because I have never um, mentioned anything in regards to the fact that uh, some of you would not have been fans since the 70s. Uh, actually, I said exactly that in my last video, that most of you, most of us, most of you, have been around since the 70s and are actually celebrating the 50th anniversary with ABBA. So <laughs> I just, um, it's it's funny to me. It's always, and I, I'm genuinely, I, I'm, I'm reading this and I, I have to laugh. Some comments of you made me, are, are actually meant to be funny uh, on your part and I have to laugh. But those kind of comments are, I don't think, are meant to be uh, funny, but they are super funny to me. And um, uh, say you're sorry, this individual wrote, uh, is of course something I will not say because there's nothing for me to be sorry about at all. Thank you for the input. Um, but I want to read, and I, this, this is very important for me, this uh, section of today's video, for the end of this video is your comments about the actual uh, album Voyage. <clears throat> and this is what you wrote. When I think about Voyage and how it felt like to anticipate a new ABBA album, it sends chills to my body. I was so comfortable with their legacy 
that I was not even mentally prepared to welcome an entirely new offering from them. But needless to say, I was not disappointed. I lit up a candle by my bed and streamed away. Listening to the record then and now feels like rekindling with my childhood friends and in many ways, Abba is the embodiment of that memory. They've been the longest friends I've ever had. Happy third anniversary to Voyage and Bobby's brother. Uh, I feel you from start to finish in every word uh, that you put down here about praising Voyage and the fact that how it felt um, to hear and see them coming back. Here's another one which was kind of funny, but not intentionally again and not in a negative way, but it it stunned me, uh, quite honestly. Mm, I bought Voyage when it came out and have not listened to it yet. It's because that will be the end of their music. No more new ABBA albums. Um, that's a choice. Uh, I actually cannot think of anyone ever putting that down in a comment, at least. Um, I don't know all the people in the world, but uh, so I cannot say if there's some, if there are people who bought the album but have never listened to it on three in those three years. Um, that was very surprising to me. And I can only uh, recommend to you to listen to the album. And uh, if, what else can I say? <laughs> it's that it's that was stunning to me. With the Voyage album, someone else wrote, I am especially connected and exceedingly sentimental, because when it came out and sailed to number one, I suddenly rapidly got transported to another era. That was my childhood, which I had deadly missed. I suddenly became a carefree 14-year-old and felt the very same thrilling feeling and moments as it was then, whenever a new ABBA album was released. Felt the same atmosphere. I couldn't believe it. I was living this again and my favorite band ABBA were everywhere at the top of the world for one more time. So I can't choose one song. I listen to it as a concept and I always end up with a lump in my throat whenever I play this, especially when it comes to the end, with Ode to Freedom. So, so I haven't lived those times as a 14-year-old because I was 14 when, or I, well, I was 11 when I discovered ABBA, ABBA and that was 20 years ago, in 2004. You know the story, it's uh, on this channel. Mm, so, yet, and that's the magical thing, without myself having lived the time in the 70s, and yet I wrote this last time to someone in the comment section. This project, this album, this comeback felt to me like living it again even though I have never lived it. Um, I felt for the first time what it was or what it must have been to live the release and the success of a new Alba album. So even though we don't meet in space and time going back, we kind of do. Uh, when I read this comment, this could have been a comment that I myself would write in a similar way. Um, so that that's that's the magic, I, I guess, uh, which which uh, voyage is for me, and which those feelings I completely felt from the first time I was listening to the album from start to finish ending with Ode to Freedom and feeling the exact same thing and still feeling it. Mm, every song is special. I honestly think it's their best album, joint equal with The Visitors. 
that's something that I don't uh, often read, of course, which is uh, only uh, natural, I guess. Mm, but it was nice to read, and someone uh, replied to that. For me, it might not be the best other album, but the one that tops them tops them all to my heart for emotional reasons. I put it in my turntable and watch the needle spinning, getting transported to another world. Nostalgic, safer, warmer. I almost never fail to get wet-eyed while listening. I usually listen to all 10 songs in a row. I owe them gratitude for this consolation and what they dare to do after four decades. Here's another one. What a magical moment that was. You could feel that this wasn't your average reunion. So many people said that Voyage would hit the big time during its first week, then vanish from the charts the following week. It then proceeded to stay in the UK top 10 for two months. It was nominated at the Grammys for two consecutive years. It topped the charts worldwide and was one of the biggest seller of the year on an international level. And that's Voyage for us. Um, again, your favorite song was Ode to Freedom and uh, followed very closely and actually interchangeable depending on the ranking version by I Can Be That Woman. Mm, I hope that you enjoy these videos as much as I do because a few of you left feedback and comments. Some of you did about this format and um, three of them I, I picked. They are short and uh, simple and they wrote um, giving feedback to this kind of style of video. I really like this video. you just talking. Thanks for your channel. Really like what you call your rambling style videos. They aren't rambling, they are interesting. And another one, I like this format very much, talking with us. So what I usually do, and you know this if you uh, are following the channel or have been following for the last three years or even less, is that um, my videos are pre-written, of course, and uh, written as a script and read by myself and, and they are short and compact uh, in that way and that's the main gist and that will remain the main gist of course but with your comments written and me selecting and going through them and going back and forth with your choices and opinions and my input I kind of feel that it gets us uh, even a little closer in our exploration of all things ABBA uh, and I hope you feel the same way too so that's why I decided now after this video being number three in this kind of um, format that let me introduce this officially as our new uh, rubric called sit and chat and I'll be back with that very soon there is no follow-up quest question I have for you today. So I thought, why not uh, ask you to put your comments in this comment section, um, put your questions in the comment section which you always had or something that you want to know, something that you want to discuss uh, or that you want to talk about yourself uh, um, or that you want my opinion on. Uh, etc. So choose your uh, sentiments, uh, choose your thoughts, put them down in this comment section and I might uh, come back to it uh, in next time in the next episode of Sit and Chat. I enjoy this very much, I hope you do too and I thank you for all your input, input 
and uh, feedback. Here's to Ode to Freedom. Thank you very much. All right. Until then, hello.